So I was um, a pretty active child. I didn't tend to do the normal sort of sports like football um, or anything like that, but I used to do a lot of like mountain biking, surfing and that sort of thing. It all started when I sort of got a bit of a pain in my shin, which for a little while was sort of put down to growing pains because I was eight at the time, you know. So what, and from just sort of running about in the, in the playground and that sort of thing, so that's what we assumed at first. I remember going in to the doctor's room and them telling me that I had cancer and at that age all I really knew about cancer was that you obviously like lose your hair. So at the, at the time that was like my biggest worry and then I remember sort of leaving the room and just uh, feeling just hot and sort of like a real weird feeling of just feeling absolutely like boiling hot for a bit. That day always will stick in my mind pretty, uh, pretty vividly. So it was Ewing sarcoma which is sort of a Quite a rare bone cancer, but it often happens in kids when you're sort of growing. And at that point, I started basically a year's worth of chemotherapy. It was sort of later on, they found out that I had adhesion scarring, so it's quite, my body heals pretty fast, and it meant that it would lock the joint up. Um, and that's where all the other operations came in. When I was 16, they said that I could either have another year or two of using the, uh, the internal prosthesis, or I could just have it sort of amputated at that point. So I decided to, to get it done. And in terms of fitness, I was found that sort of, it was going to the gym was just somewhere that I could sort of clear my head. I remember waking up and it, is a, it was a surreal feeling. Um, obviously like not having the leg there was a bit weird, but it, it never really phased me as such. It was sort of just a relief, if anything. <sighs> Learning to walk again was probably one of the harder parts for me, just because I had to wait quite a long period of time before my leg had healed and was ready to use a prosthetic so that I could then get a prosthetic moulded to my leg and make sure that it fit correctly and was comfortable for me. You sort of think of someone that's had cancer as sort of a bit frail, they'd stay in, you wouldn't really expect to see them doing much. Whereas I've always wanted to sort of make sure that that's not how I felt in myself. So I think mentally it was just trying to make sure that I um, fulfilled my sort of expectation of how I wanted to to be in the future. So it was about 11 years old was when I started getting into the sort of bodybuilding side of fitness. Going to the gym was just somewhere that I could sort of clear my head and make sure that I was feeling all right for like the next day. Keeps you feeling a bit more sane, I think. Uh, especially if you've had something where you can't sort of join in with other activities that you see a lot of other people doing. Um, it gave me something that was sort of mine and I could just do it. I didn't have to rely on other people to, to do what I wanted to do so I could just go in, get it done by myself. The amount of time that I've been training, I know what my body needs. I only use pre-workouts if I'm really sort of struggling that day or if I haven't had, I know I haven't had enough food. I often train at the end of a work day or amongst my work. So it means that I need to just have a little bit of that energy um, just on hand basically, just to go if I really need to sort of get my training in quick just in order to make up the, the macros that I haven't got in the day, basically, just so that I'm making sure I'm still putting on the muscle and help my recovery time, so that when I'm training nice and hard, I'm still going to get the results that I need. It can become a bit hard, you know, if I, if I do miss my meal prep, I end up eating sort of a little less healthy meals or just sort of really basic meals. Legs stay nice and straight at the top. Perfect, and just keeping it moving. We're going to get for 10 reps per side. Perfect. So the past experiences have definitely helped in terms of the mental aspect of personal training in ter or in terms of helping others with their training. Perfect. Nice and steady. Good job. I've been through that struggle of like sort of finding my training hard and sort of trying to improve my training whilst being in sort of a difficult time. My clients, will, you know, they'll still say that it's, it's great to see someone that's been through a fair amount and is still sort of willing to put the time and effort into to training hard. After this set of 10, we're then going to go into our dumbbell lunges, okay? Two more from here, nice and steady. It'll always be there and you can always return to it, no matter how much rest time you need to take away from it. If anything, you can often achieve more after something like that. After a little bit of a setback, you have that time to sort of recover and then you can maybe even like aim to go a little higher, a little further than you previously had done. There's no rush at the end of the day. You can always get back to it when you, when you need to. The mental side of things has definitely helped with my job role. I can help to push those that are sort of in 
their harder times and sort of in their sort of dark place.